Okay, in this video we're going to talk about meters and internal resistance. So uh, whenever we want to measure current or voltage in a circuit we use a meter. Uh, so this symbol here, the circle with an A in it, that's an ammeter. Measures of course amps or current. And the thing to remember about current is current is the number of coulombs per second. Right? So basically it's just counting how many coulomb of charge passes through a point in the circuit per second. It's almost like a turnstile when you go to uh, GM Place or, or sorry, B BC Place or Rogers Arena. Um, you're just counting how many people go through the turnstile. The ammeter does the same thing. It just counts how many coulombs of charge pass through per second and that's the current. So an ammeter has to be connected in series with whatever you're trying to measure, whether if we're trying to measure the current coming from the battery, as in this diagram, I could also put another ammeter here and measure just the current going through uh, this resistor here. Now a voltmeter measures potential difference. So it needs to read the potential of the current at one side of the device and compare it to the potential at the other side. Right? Remember, it's measuring the difference in potential. So this voltmeter is reading the potential at this point and comparing it to the potential at this point. And it's taking the difference between those. So for that reason, a voltmeter has to be connected in parallel with the circuit. Again, I could connect a voltmeter over here. Sorry. I could connect a, a voltmeter over here, but I would have to connect it in parallel with this resistor to measure the voltage. Okay. So ammeters measure current, must be connected in series, and voltmeters measure potential difference and must be connected in parallel. Okay, the other thing we want to talk about in this video is internal resistance. So here I have a circuit and I have a battery and what you'll notice is this battery has a dotted line around it and there's an extra resistor. Well this little resistance here is the internal resistance of the battery. Okay, the, the components of the battery itself have resistance. So the current, as it passes through the battery, loses some of its potential as it's fighting its way through the, uh, through the electrochemical paste that's inside the electrolyte and through the terminals of the battery, through the metal itself. So there is some internal resistance. The current has to, give, has to use some of its energy to make it through the battery. So this little tiny resistance is the resistance of the battery itself. I like to imagine this dotted line as actually the casing of the battery, as if this was a little D-cell battery. That's the battery itself. And we put the resistor inside that dotted line to show that it's the internal resistance. And what we have is uh, the normal symbol for our battery here is inside the battery, and we call that the EMF. Uh, the other symbol for EMF is this uh, funny shaped E, it's another Greek letter, and this is the electromotive force. Or EMF. And basically it is the force that is pushing the uh, coulombs of charge, the electrons themselves, through the battery. Okay. So I like to think of the EMF as this is the maximum voltage of the battery. So for example, if you got a little uh, uh, AA battery for your uh, TV remote or something, and you notice that it says 1.5 volts, that is the EMF of that battery. Okay. The battery by itself has a total potential of 1.5 volts. As soon as you plug that battery into a device though, and current starts flowing through, the potential drops. And what we actually measure when it's connected to something 
is the terminal voltage. We've been calling it the total voltage, but really what we're measuring is the voltage at the terminals of the battery, VT. Okay. That terminal voltage is not equal to the EMF because I'm going to lose a small potential drop in this resistor. So what we have is a new equation for terminal voltage or total voltage. This is the voltage being supplied to the circuit. We take the EMF and we subtract the voltage in that internal resistance. I times R is voltage, but we're just subtracting this tiny voltage in here. And this terminal voltage, or the total voltage as we've been calling it in other videos, is the voltage that's being supplied to these resistors. Okay, We don't get to add in this little extra part. So in this circuit, what is the terminal voltage? I'd need to know the current flowing through the battery. So I'm going to first of all figure out the total resistance of my circuit. I have two resistors connected in parallel, so the resistance of this parallel section, 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8, uh, combined they have a resistance of 2.667 ohms. So almost 3 ohms. Now the total resistance of the circuit I need to add in the resistance of the battery. And that gives me a resistance of 3.317 ohms. So now the EMF is sorry, 6 volts, times I, times this resistance. And that gives me a current in the circuit of 1.81 amps. So my terminal voltage, so the voltage measured at the terminals of the battery, I'm going to subtract this tiny voltage in the internal resistance of the battery to get a terminal voltage of 4.8 volts. So even though I have a 6 volt battery, the voltage that's being supplied to the circuit and the voltage that would be in each of these resistors then is only 4.8 volts because I'm losing about 1.2 volts in the battery itself. Okay? So again, I've just used Ohm's Law and my uh, rules for parallel and series circuits. The other thing you may notice on the formula sheet is that our equation for the terminal voltage is actually plus or minus I times R. Where does this plus sign come from? Well, if you think about it, a lot of our batteries are rechargeable, right? I can plug in my phone, I can plug in uh, a lot of devices, my laptop, and the battery will recharge. So rather than uh, pushing current out from the battery, I'm supplying current to the battery. And if I'm charging a battery, I would use this form of the equation. This should be a lowercase r, right? Sorry. So I would use the positive form of the equation uh, if I'm charging a battery. That way I could find out how much current I need to supply or what the terminal voltage I would measure uh, because basically what's going to happen is I'm going to have to supply a larger voltage. So if I wanted to charge 
uh, say my car battery dies, which is a 12 volt battery, I probably have to give it about 15 volts of potential to charge it. Okay? So that I'm pushing more current through the battery, overcoming the internal resistance, and charging uh, the battery up. Okay. So, but normally if we're just plugging a battery into a circuit, we use the minus, but if we're charging a battery, we use the positive. Okay, so that's uh, internal resistance.